your name we pray, amen. So we, uh, man, I, I just got back from a little vacation, took a few weeks off from preaching, and um, it's good to be back. I, some people asked me last week, like, man, like, are, are you excited? And I, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of itching to go, uh, because just over these last couple weeks, just taking some time off, there's just been some stuff he's been dropping on me and saying, it, it's time, like, it, here we go. Uh, and so here we go. Like, there's stuff he's kind of put on my heart from the very beginning of revival. When you look at revival and what it means, man, there, there's stuff he put on me and he said, this is what revival is going to look like. But it's a process to get there. It, 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 there's sometimes, like, there's waiting and sometimes there's just, you know, there's work that has to be done and, and there's just these moments and you're just ready to go right away but revival is kind of a process that we don't always realize. E even the disciples, you know, after Jesus left, they had to wait and they prayed together and they prayed week after week until finally the Holy Spirit fell afresh upon them in the book of Acts. And so there's sometimes there's a waiting period. But one thing he put on me a long time ago when we were beginning revival was that there is another level. There's a next level. And some of you guys are like, I thought we were doing this Corinthians series. I, I'm sorry, you know, he just told me we've got to take a little break on Corinthians because we've got to talk about what it means this month to go to that next level. So for me, it, it hit on vacation. Uh, I mean, it, it was just perfect. So I, we went to Colorado with my mom and dad and my sister and her husband and her little boy. And uh, my brother-in-law, we've, we've been friends a long time. We're close but he brought a Nintendo Switch on uh, vacation. We're in Colorado. We're surrounded by mountains. We should be out hiking. He brought his Switch. And so finally, after a couple days, we avoided it. But finally, he brought it out. You know, the kids were kind of tired, didn't want to do any more hikes. Um, they just wanted to rest. And so he brought this out for them to play. And his son has been playing video games for I don't know how long. I mean, he, he's a pro. My kids have never... I don't think they've touched a video game. This was, one time at Walmart, they remember it. They remember it distinctly. It was like Christmas time. We're walking through, and they saw this thing. Can we try? And I was like, sure, go for it. It was like best thing ever. And so here they are, like, getting these controls. They don't know what does what. They don't know anything. Uh, their little cousin, who's younger than Maverick and Harper, is, like, yelling at them, like, are you guys dumb? You don't even <laughs> He's a funny kid. He just says what's on his mind. You guys don't even know what to do? And, and so, like, our kids, like, when you get into a video game, okay, when you first turn it on, wh wh what would you call, like, that space that you're in before the game has actually started? Any gamers in here? What would you call that? Like, before the game starts, you're in this space. Lobby. I was going to say it's a lobby, right? Like, if you play online, like, you're kind of, you're in the lobby. You're waiting for the game to start, okay? Okay. So they're just in the lobby of this game, and they're, like, messing around with the controls and everything, and they're like, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. This is so great. They don't realize that there's still levels to play, okay? Most of the church, here's what the church I've grown up in, and I think the church, maybe a lot of you have come from your experience We've been really good at getting people into the lobby. And I, I said this earlier this year, and I, I wanted to say it again because he's put this on me, that we have to learn that there are levels that go deeper than just the lobby. He doesn't want you to live in the lobby. It's more fun to play the game, right? Now, when you first get in the lobby, it's amazing. We've never been here before. Like, when you first get into the church and you first start hearing it, and then you, you hear this message of like, oh, man, there's a Savior who loves me. He died for me. This is incredible. Like, yes, I want to repent. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to get baptized. Like, the church has been so good at that. In fact, we've got processes and, and models for how we get people into the building, and then we get them into the baptistry. But beyond that, we don't know how to get them out of the lobby and into the next level. We're going to go next level, church. Amen? Come on, amen. Here we go. We're going to go next level. So here, here's my kids playing this game, and it's like, you can go back and you can play these retro games. And so Uncle Knife, his real name's Alex, but everybody calls him Knife. It's a whole story. Don't worry about it. Uh, he's not in a gang or anything. Don't worry. Uh, he's safe. 
Uncle Knife, he pulls out this game, and he picks, like, the old retro Mario, like Super Mario. And so finally, you know, he's like, here, let me show you guys. There's a level that you can play. And he gets them into the level, and they start taking turns. And, and like, right off the bat, you know, there's, like, I mean, there's turtles coming at you, and there's fireballs from flowers being shot at you. My kids' heads are like, oh, that looks cool. I'll let the flower ball hit me. And I'm just like, no, you got to jump. Come on. Like, I, I don't, I have a hard time processing, like, they are beginners. But the frustration is real because I played that game growing up, and pff, I was good. I was real good. All right? So I, <laughs> I, I, I played a lot of video games too much, Okay. So I, I'm watching this, and I'm just like, I'm trying to bite my tongue and be patient, but it's difficult because they don't understand what they're doing. But then their little cousin gets it, and he's like, give me the control. He rips it out of their hands, and he starts doing stuff, and he's like jumping, and, and all of a sudden, there's a mushroom going. And, and I'm like, yes, you got to get that. And he gets that. He knows. And then my kids get it, and they, they bump up, and they try and hit the box to get the mushroom, and the mushroom just floats away. They don't even run after it. And I'm just like... You can't waste a mushroom. In Mario, you don't waste a mushroom. And then they keep going later on. And this is the one where they got the feather. You know about the feather? And you turn into like squirrel Mario, like flying squirrel Mario. I don't know what you call it. If somebody knows, you can shout it out. I don't care. Flying squirrel Mario. That's what I'm going to call it. And, and I mean, he can like do these super jumps and fly and everything. And they hit it and the feather just kind of floats and they don't even try to get it. And I'm just like, oh, I can't breathe. Like, at one point, Steph was just like, calm down. Like, this is their first time. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. And, and, and star power and all these things. There's all these, these power-ups and, and these level-ups and these, these new levels that you can get to once you defeat or once you accomplish this level. But it's like they just have no clue because nobody's taught them. Nobody's explained it to them. And, and I would tell you, we are in a season of dryness in the church, in our world. Actually, I won't even say world, the Western church. Because across the world, we're hearing about miracles and moves of the Holy Spirit. He is on the move. He is working still. But here in the West, we have explained away the supernatural. We've explained away the Holy Spirit. We've explained away the power and we've just said, no, that doesn't happen anymore. That was for that time, but not for this time. No, it was for all times. That's why we have these seasons of revival. And that's what this church, we are stepping into. We're stepping into a season of revival. We're, we're like my kids playing this game for the last however many years of our Christian faith. And we're just letting the mushroom fly by. We're letting the feather float away. We're letting star power just drift off. It's like, no, we're going to embrace the power. That is who the Holy Spirit is. That is what he wants to bring into the church. His power brings life, and his power brings revival. John 7, 37 through 38. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. In Ezekiel, in, in I think Ezekiel 47, he has this vision of the temple, and out of the temple is flowing a river. And I want to tell you, we are his temples today. That's what it tells us in Corinthians. We are temples of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. His Holy Spirit wants to flow like a river. But let me tell you something, what we've done. Matthew 25, Matthew 25, verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven, and if you've got Bibles, open up your Bibles, hang with us here. Man, if you're taking notes, take some notes today, because the more you take notes, the more you write it down, the more you read it for yourself, the more you internalize it and begin to live it out in your life. Don't just sit here passively, sit here actively ready to receive from the Holy Spirit. He wants to speak actively into your life. It, you're just letting the mushroom drift by, okay? You, you're just letting the feather float away. Active faith. Let's go. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids 
who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming, come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. They weren't prepared. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. It, it doesn't work like that. You can't just borrow oil. We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. When you see oil in the Bible... And I, I, I just heard this this week, and, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. When we see oil in the Bible, connect that to the Holy Spirit. Because when you look back at the Old Testament, when there was an anointing with oil of King Saul or King David, it, it says the Holy Spirit came upon them, okay? Oil and the Holy Spirit are connected when we read Scripture. So there were five that came prepared. And there were five that came passive. That's what they were. They were passive. I, I would tell you the five that came passive, man, did, did they love the bridegroom at one time? Did they say, yes, I want to commit to him? Yes, I want into the kingdom. I want to be a part of it? Yes. But they became passive. And they sat by and they didn't stir each other up. They didn't sharpen each other. They didn't encourage each other in their faith. They didn't seek his presence to grow in his power. When you spend time alone with him, when you carve out that time to spend listening to his voice, you begin to strengthen those muscles to hear his voice. You begin to hear him more and more clearly the more actively you pursue him in your life. You begin to build up your oil reserves. But some in the church, we've sat by passively for too long and we've said, oh, I've got enough until he gets here. I'm good. I got in. I got, I got into the water one time. I got baptized. And, and you're still living on that last moment of faith instead of actively pursuing him for that next encounter. You can't keep living on your old oil reserves. They're going to run out eventually. You have to continually fill yourself up in his presence. I, I, I figured that out because on vacation, I went on vacation and I thought, oh, this could be great. This could be restful. Like, it wasn't. It was nonstop. We were doing stuff every day. And I came back, and there were a couple days there where I just felt dry, and I felt depleted. I, I, I did not feel the fruits of the Spirit in my life. I was not patient. I was not kind. I was none of those things. And so I finally realized, I, man, I, I just got to spend time in His presence again, one-on-one, -on -one, in the Word, in silence, listening to His voice, choosing to worship Choosing to do the things that fill up my oil reserves. Man, I, I had that yesterday. I was able to sit in silence all morning. And by the end of the morning, I mean, the, the recharge was real. The, the Holy Spirit's presence in my life, and I, I, I knew it. I, I, it was confirmed again. There was a fresh filling. But some of us, we keep living on that one time we were filled, and we keep looking back 5, 10, 20 years and saying, that's enough. It's not. The bridegroom is coming back. You can see it in our world. The world keeps getting darker and darker. 
That means that we are getting closer and closer each day to when he's coming back. But some of us, we keep sitting by passively saying, I got enough until he gets here. And he's saying, no, 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 pursue me now. Seek after me now in this moment. Don't miss this moment with me. But we keep letting it slip by. Dr. Rob Reimer, he's got a book called River Dwellers. And I love this imagery. He talks about the Holy Spirit in this book. Revival is a spirit-filled community of believers. It is a community of believers who have been filled with the Spirit and are continuing to live in the fullness of the Spirit. It is a community of people who have become full-time river dwellers. Abide in me, remain in me, and I will remain in you. That is what Jesus is talking about. Stay in the river. Some of us, we got into the river once, and we said that's enough, and we've stopped seeking the river in our lives. He wants to continue to flow. But we've said once was enough, I'm good, I'll see you when you get back, Jesus. Dwell in the river. When you look through scripture, you see uh, Matthew 3.11. Here's what John says. John the Baptist said, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Some of us, we've just done that baptism of repentance and we've just done that bare minimum and we've said that was enough. I'm good. And I will tell you that you do, you receive the Holy Spirit. When you accept him in your heart, when you believe in faith that Jesus is who the Bible says he is and you make him Lord and Savior of your life, you repent and turn to him by faith. It says in scripture, you receive the Holy Spirit. It was the same for the disciples. John 20, 21 through 22. Here's what Jesus said to them. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Then you go to Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. Here's what Jesus says. This is after the resurrection. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They had received the Spirit already, okay? Okay. Some of you in here, you're thinking, yeah, I've received the Spirit. I've made that decision. I, I, I've said, yes, I believe Jesus is Lord and Savior of my life, and you have received it, and you've been obedient in the waters of baptism. In fact, that's what we're going to see today after service. If you want to join us out here, out back, we've got a baptism today. Hope Holcomb is going to get out there, and she's going to say, he is Lord and Savior of my life. He is the King of my heart, and it is a declaration of spiritual warfare for which side she stands on, whose she is. And so that's what she's doing today. And she receives the Holy Spirit by faith. But even after you receive the Holy Spirit, you can get a fresh baptism, a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit again and again and again as we seek to dwell in the river. Let me show you. Here's what Scripture says. This is all like fresh revelation. Like when I, when I was reading this summer, some of this stuff, it just hit me. And I was like, I've never understood that before because I, I grew up in a church where it was taught one way and it has to be this way because it's tradition. We don't go by tradition here at Revival. We go by the word. That's what we live by. We live on. This is our foundation. This is the rock. We're gonna build our house, his house on it. Here's what it says, okay? Acts 2, 1 through 4. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. 
Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. He didn't save us just to get us into the lobby. He saved us to go deeper. He saved us to go deeper into relation with him. He saved us to lean in to the power of his Holy Spirit and what he wants to do and how he wants to renew our hearts, to tear down the hearts of stone and build them new so they can be fresh and flowing with the river of the Holy Spirit through your life and into the lives of those around you. When you begin to walk as a vessel of Jesus, as a vessel of the Holy Spirit, and you carry his presence, it's gonna bring living water into the people around you. There are people dying of thirst in this world. They're looking for answers. They're seeking the spiritual. They're seeking real power. And some of you... You just don't believe it. You don't think there's anything more to it than, man, I just need to get saved so I can go to heaven. No, he wants to empower you right here and right now so you can bring water into this world. Acts 2, 16 through 18. This is in Peter's sermon. After they've been filled with the Holy Spirit, He says to the people, no, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people, not just the disciples, not just that group of 72 or 120 that were there today, not just those first generation believers, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons, your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. This isn't a one-time event. It is an empowering encounter with the manifest presence of God, and we can have more than one of these encounters. When I, when I read this, I, I'd always kind of question, man, I, I, I thought, I, I don't know if I've ever been baptized with the Holy Spirit. I, I remember getting baptized as a kid and, and going into the waters, and really what it was all about then, I kind of understood, and I thought, man, salvation insurance sounds great. Sounds better than Geico or Safeco or whatever. Like, I want to know where I'm going when I die. That was, what it, that was what it was to me. And I got to eat like a little cracker and juice during worship. And I thought, man, a snack would be great. You know, that sounds amazing. I think I was probably nine or 10, you know. That was all it was. But I still, there's a part of me that understood it a little. Later on, I went to this conference. And we send our students to the same conference today. Every summer, we send them to this thing. It's called CIY, Christ in Youth. And it was at Christ and Youth, this conference, where I heard the gospel preached in a way where I knew that person that preached it and that said those words, he actually believed what he was saying. And I wanted that for my life. I wanted that for my life. And and I felt, I can feel him right now. Can you feel that? The Holy Spirit is moving right now in this room. Some of you are feeling him fall afresh on you right now in this room because you're remembering that first time you felt him that first time you experienced his presence. I felt it at that conference and I knew without a doubt he's real. And he's shown me other times throughout my life where I knew and I could feel his presence. And what what this Dr. Rob Reimer explains as he's breaking down scripture, what, what he explains is those moments, that is baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. That is what we want for revival. We want constantly for revival to happen in people's lives, for a new and a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit to come. And man, I believe what the prophet Joel says. 
that there are signs and wonders and miracles and, and, and there's going to be sons and daughters and there are people in this room that are raised up in the kingdom and they're going to do miraculous things in the name of Jesus. I believe that. There's some of you sitting out here right now, you, you can sense the Holy Spirit saying that to you right now. You know he's got a call on your life and you've denied it because you've said, no, 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 that power doesn't happen anymore. That, that kind of thing isn't real. No, that was long ago. No, it happens and he's ready to move again. Revival is breaking out. He wants to break out in your life today. It's something I pray constantly for, for this fresh filling of our church for the miraculous to begin to happen. I, I believe we're going to see healings happen. I believe we're going to see prophecies come to pass. We're going to see encouragement and building up in the church like the church hasn't seen in years. The river is going to flow out of the temple again. He's ready to break loose but we have to actively seek him. You can be one of the five that is prepared and ready, or you can be one of the five that's saying, I'm passive and I'm sitting back. Uh, I, I don't care enough. But man, don't be caught on the last day being one of those passive five. Acts 4, 29 through 31. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats. The early church was being threatened. And give us, your, give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Everything that revival does will be done in the name of Jesus. It's not to bring ourselves glory, it's to bring him glory. And through that, it will draw people into his presence. It will draw people into the river of his Holy Spirit because they want that living water and they will want to dwell in the river again. Come back to the river. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all Filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what I'm saying. We can be filled afresh again and again. These were those same disciples, that same group of believers. They were filled on the day of Pentecost. Here they are again in chapter 4. There's a fresh filling and new power. And guess what? They go to another level. Check this out. They go to another level. Acts 5.15. This is amazing. As a result of the apostles' work, Sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow, Peter's shadow, write that down, Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. There are shadow healings that are taking place. There are next levels that we haven't even realized because we've been trapped in the lobby wandering around, not sure where to go or what to do. The Holy Spirit, he wants us to level up. The, let, me, let me repeat that. I don't think you heard that. The Holy Spirit wants us to level up. The Holy Spirit wants you to level up. Come. You don't want it. We got to want it. Not passive, but active. Stand up, church. Let's get active. Worship team, let's go. Let's get active. I, I love what Skylar did last week. We don't always feel like getting active. He had us put our hands out to receive. I, I want you to put your hands out to receive again. I like that. I'm going to steal that from him. During this song, ask him to receive a fresh filling. During this song, ask him to say, God, come again. Come new into my life like you did before. Come and do a new thing. I want to go to another level. That takes getting active. If you want to get in shape, if you want to get fit, can you just sit on your couch and get better because you think you want to get better? No, you have to choose against your feelings. You don't feel like getting off the couch. Guess what? You have to choose to get active. You have to choose to go to the gym. You have to choose to eat differently. If you want to go to another level with him, we have to choose in this moment to get active. We don't feel like putting our hands out. 
We don't feel like jumping up and down during worship. We don't feel like getting on our knees and crying out and asking for him to come again and fall fresh on us. But we choose it if we want it. If you want that today, you can choose it. If you want prayer today for a fresh filling, man, I'll be over here. Prayer team will be over here. You can come ask for prayer for a fresh filling of his Holy Spirit because he wants to come actively in this moment. Let me pray that same prayer that they prayed back in Acts 4 for our church right now. And now, O Lord, hear their threats. Give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. That's what his power enables us to do. It brings boldness to his church. God, bring us boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the holy name of your servant, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would actively move in this room right now. We ask that you would fall afresh on us, that we'd be baptized in your presence today that we would sense that you are here with us, that we would know without a doubt that you are moving and active in our lives and that we would seek you out every day for a fresh filling. In your name we pray, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray, Jesus. In your name we pray, Father God. Amen.